seeing right now, like on, on Bitcoin, for example, and many other coins, I, I hope this did not affect your portfolio significantly. Because if you use uh, automated bots, then for sure this whole plunge being offset by the dollar cost averaging effect that you have with automated bots anyway. Um, and in the long and midterm perspectives, uh, it's going to be a, a huge win scenario if you are using bots and if the price skyrockets from the current levels or if it goes even below like 30, 32, 33, 34k, which is still possible due to this whole situation around the, I think it's like the 20th time China is trying to ban Bitcoin, but you cannot ban something that you do not control, right? So it's just like an artificial uh, attempt to kind of push the price down. And of course, we can discuss why that is happening and who needs to see the price of Bitcoin falling. I mean, the topic of today's webcast is not about that. I'm just saying that, yeah, stay strong and never put all eggs in one basket. And yeah, diversify. That's something we will cover today. How to diversify and how to, um, like, what are the best... I mean, we have several bots, right? We have uh, as bot, we have classic bot, we have combo bot, and each one of them has its own unique purpose. And we're gonna go through all of these different market scenarios where you should stick with the as bot configuration because it will bring you more returns and minimize the potential loss. And with the classic bot, we will also look at some kind of interesting scenarios where you can launch it and on what market scenarios classic bot will bring you more returns than the as bot for example <clears throat> and we will also discuss the combo bot which is about the futures trading i will show you um how to basically analyze the market in, in a way that would let you uh figure out the best configuration to enter the market with the automated bots okay so we will look in how to define the the like the optimal number of grid levels for your trading configuration and for those of you who are not familiar with automated bots at BeatsGap, i will quickly remind you that this whole thing about s bot classic bot and even the combo bot is basically uh, grid technology so the well it's not really the science behind it but it's it's pretty much the logic behind this bot is that it basically plots buy orders like here they are represented with green uh, lines on the chart and sell orders represented by red lines on the chart and then, and then you define the trading range in in which you expect the bot to execute all of your trades so for example if you look at mine bitcoin maybe so you see all of the uh trades it made since like may 2021 and how it, you see look in my case it has successfully managed to uh, buy the dip and then accumulate on the rising market and now you see 72 percent that's a pretty impressive result for just four months i mean some portfolio managers are chasing for at least eight percent ten percent per year but here you can have like 72 as you can see well actually 64 because you also need to take into account the the value change of the bitcoin because uh the thing is that you still have some of the base currency, which like the, the balance of your quote currency and, bal and base currency, it always fluctuates because the price swings higher or lower. And that way, bot constantly buys and sells. So it buys at lower price and sells it later at the higher prices. You can see exactly on the chart, green uh, circles, they represent executed buy orders and uh, red circles they represent executed sell orders so when the market fluctuates it just buys low sell high and that way we have this thing as the bot profit so the beauty of this is that this bot profit is something that you already possess okay so for example 253 dollars i made in bitcoin is something that i have on my balance like that's that's something that i can use now so that's my uh, realized return what some traders and well 
pretty much all of the beginners in the crypto market. They, they don't understand the difference between the unrealized and realized returns. So the core, I mean, the, the key is basically realized return because that's the only thing you care at the end of the day. You want to see uh, how much you made and that's only realized return. If you have some uh, trades that are open, like for example, if I go to my trading section here, I think if I open my futures account, yeah, here I have my short sell position and it says $17 in, in profit as of now. But yesterday it was $58, for example. So it changes with every day. And that's something as known as unrealized return. Okay, it changes. So that's why some traders sometimes they get confused saying that, okay, so without using your robot i could have made more money and actually we made this infographic to show it so for example if you look at my bitcoin to usdc trade it says no actually maybe let's use uh alda yeah that's i think that's the best example here so uh, that's the initial balance at the start of this robot so i had 317 algos and the $389. So if I would just hold this um, number of algo coins and amount of USDT, I would end up having my return of only $247. But thanks to the bot, the bot that has been buying low, selling high all the time for the last two months already, almost two months actually, it made me $733. And that's the exact, uh, how do you say, comparison analysis that you can have here on, on Beatscape. You can literally see what would happen if you would just hold the coins on your balance and what would happen if you would uh, launch the bot, okay? So in my case, for sure, it was a wise idea to trade Algo USDT with my uh, as bot configuration, okay, which made me $700 so far. That's like the best performing bot I have as of today. If, let's open actually the chart. Let's go for it. So you see, that's, that's an impressive one. I mean, this whole period of market rally, it's been trading like crazy, 5,000 and half, but yeah, 5,500 trades in total. I mean, that's that's impressive, and that's I mean that's the level of uh, high frequency you can achieve with automated bots. And this 767 dollars is my realized profit, so I can uh, withdraw it, for example, and buy. Well, you cannot buy a Lamborghini with 767 dollars, of course, but at least you can maybe uh, use it to to travel somewhere, or maybe to use it to launch another bot. For example so that's really up to you because that's a realized return that's something that you can use straight away so that's the the main difference between ordinary trading where you have these manual orders to set like limit buy limit sell orders it's it's a different story there so anyway let's go and see maybe my worst performers as of today because it's it's always important to look into worst performing bots to see what was the wrong thing I made. So for example, with Mkire, it's, I think it's MakerCoin. Yeah, I think it's MakerCoin. Um, and, and here you can see that it's just that the timing was not correct, okay? And I said classic bot. So as you know, and if you don't know, of course I will tell you, classic bot is the one that is perfect for a rising market. So for example, if you expect the market to move like this, then you should rather stick with the classic bot configuration because that way it's going to bring you more returns. Okay. So that's exactly what I did because I anticipated the price of Empire to appreciate from that point, but it's, it's still falling there. But despite that, I mean, let's check the the exact drop 
Um, let's take price range. So yeah, I think I started around this area to be honest, $20. Yeah, so the profit that I made, $6 so far, it did actually offset a small size of the whole market plunge here, which was like minus 20 percent so instead of having minus 20 here i have only minus 17. yeah so i mean that's that that's at least uh one advantage of bots is that they achieve this do dollar cost averaging and that way it kind of because it spreads your investments um over multiple orders that way it proportionately buys the dip. That's exactly what happened here. And that way, the, the average price at which you enter the market becomes lower. And that way, once the price reverts and goes higher, hopefully, you will quickly recover this loss you made here. In my case, that's minus 17%. Okay. And yeah, but as of now, it's just the timing was, I would say, incorrect. Actually, I should have launched the Asbot instead, because um, Asbot on the falling market and on the sideways market, it acts even better than the uh, classic bot, because its investment distribution logic is different from the classic bot. And it works this way. So let me actually show you the exact example. So let's go with the uh, S bot. S bot. Okay. So you know that both classic bot and S bot they buy low and sell high. That's the red one. Okay. Let's actually plot two more here and here. Let's make it green. Okay. So in case of the S bot. Um, and we're going to use just some like gross estimates, okay? So let's say you allocated, uh, I don't know, $100, whatever. No, actually, let's, let, let's not play with numbers. It's not needed, actually. So the thing about ASBO is that you never invest the whole sum at once, okay? At let, what The current price is what? 33000 or something. It never invests this whole sum in Bitcoin. Okay, so it proportionately allocates the base currency, so that's here, in sell orders. Because in order to sell something, you need to have the base currency. And that's why when you start the bot, it requires you to have some of base currency on your balance already. Like here, for example, you see, in order for me to launch this trading setup, I need 0.4 MKR and 524 USDT, okay? It, that's because in order to sell this whole amount of MKR, I mean, in order to have all of these sell orders, I need to have enough of the base currency to sell it, right? So that's why it shows me the exact um, estimates of how much I need in the base currency and in the quote currency. So that's the uh, proportionate investment distribution in that sense. And then the quote currency, which goes as a second currency in the trading pair, in that case, that's, let's say it's Y. And that's going to be a quote currency, quote currency. So <clears throat> the logic of the ASBOT is that regardless of the uh, price, it's always going to spend the same uh, sum of money. Okay, so let's say if the price falls, and let's say now one coin, wait, no, let's use it. In order for it to spend $100, it's gonna buy, let's say, uh, at, at, at this price, 10 coins. But if the price falls further way down, now with $100, you can buy, let's say, 15 coins more because the price of the coin depreciated and now you can afford more coins. So that way, on the falling market, you accumulate more coins. And then the price reverts back. It's going to be a great scenario for you because you accumulated so much coins. Now they are in the market rally. The price of your coins appreciates. And I mean, you are doing just great. 
Whereas in case of the classic bot, it also has limit buy, limit sell orders, so nothing new here, except for the fact that the way it sells and buys is different. And because it's different, you use it in, in uh, different market scenarios. So for the classic bot, classic. Um, it doesn't really care about the, um, the, the, the like the, the total sum. It's it's more like it always buys and sells the same amount of coins. So for example, when the price falls, okay, it's gonna buy. Let's say at this price level, it's gonna buy ten coins. And if and, and if ten coins cost you uh, one hundred dollars, it's gonna spend one hundred dollars. But if the price then further falls, and again it needs to buy 10 coins, that way you now, you now see that the price of coin depreciated. So of course 10 coins now, they cost less than the sum you spent at the higher price. So let's say it here it now costs just $70 for example. Okay, so that's the difference with the Asbot. The Asbot, once again, it would always spend $100 and that way it would accumulate more coins on the falling market whereas in case of the classic bot it always buys and sells this same amount of coins so if the value of it now diminished then it's gonna just spend less okay but compared with the S bot it won't accumulate that many coins as the S bot which is bad in case of the falling market and if you expect the market to bounce off like that, then in this kind of scenario, the S bot would bring you more returns than the classic bot. So that's why, if we look into different scenarios, then for the S bot, and let's actually um, walk you through the new interface, by the way. So the way you start bot is here. You just click on start new bot. That's one orange button at, at the top right of the uh, dashboard. Start new bot. So it actually here, it tells you exactly which one is for. So this S bot is the sideways channel market. And by sideways channel market, we are looking for something that we see, well, in case of, um, I think, no, Kuzama. Kuzama is exactly in the sideways market now. I think so. Uh, yeah, so that's the sideways market here. A short one, but still sideways. So that when the market moves in there, in the range, like in the channel in, in where it has, let's say, horizontal resistance and uh, support lines, that's exactly what stands for the sideways market. So it's kind of a stays neutral, okay? One day it's trading higher, the next day it's trading lower, so it kind of stays somewhere in between, and that's why s bot on this kind of market scenario is going to bring you the most of the money. Whereas and actually, let's go with some uh, settings here. Let's say I want to launch as bot on, uh, yeah, my neighbor Alice, for example, whatever. Actually, looks like as bot is a good option here. So uh, the next thing to do for you is to define the trading range. So once you selected the strategy, you anticipate the market to move in the sideways, or to fall maybe a bit and then move sideways, well, in this kind of cases. <clears throat> you now need to define the trading range. So usually the way I define the trading range is just looking for solid support and resistance areas. So in that case, the solid uh, support is here. For Alice, it's, it's the price of $8.5 approximately. And you can see this because of this formation over here, that formation here, this market plunge formation here, and even here you can see that it has managed to bounce off this level. So it's been four times that it proved that this level, $8.5, is the point of interest. It's the point of, uh, I would say, where sellers and buyers compete the most, okay? You can actually use tools like vo uh, Volume Profile. That's the one that will tell you even more. Alice USDT. 
uh, let's go with four hour chart yep and not this one so you go here fixed range and I think let's simulate it from that area <clears throat> So, okay, so it's been listed just on March. Uh, maybe let's use a bit lower time frame, just to kind of maybe from from July, I guess. So you can see exactly the point of interest. And here we now trading below this point of the most interest, which in that case shows us that at the price of thirteen dollars. That's where we had the most volume traded, both buying and, and selling pressure at that time. So that's why if, if you see the price breaching this point of interest, then usually that's that's a bullish sign. Um, but right now we are trading below this point of interest and that's actually a, a, a bearish sign. And that means that we need to now look at the next uh, biggest point of interest traded. So in that case, that's exactly around this area. Let me just draw it for you. Where is this rectangle? Yeah. So this one. Not not exactly eight dollars, but it does not usually uh, need to correspond to the exact support and resistance line since the coin is like been trading just since March I mean there has not been enough liquidity since then to kind of have this proper statistical analysis and, and everything so maybe Alice is not the best example to use the volume profile but still you can see the most volume traded and in, in areas where you see the next uh, volume mostly traded that's where you can expect the market to kind of uh, bounce off from 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 the falling market so right now we're trading below this point of interest so i would expect the price to fall to that area approximately so which is pretty much around uh the the expected support okay so i mean they, they these tools uh volume profile and ordinary support and resistance line they kind of complement each other. It, it doesn't mean that um, they will always confirm each other, but it's, it's just good to use multiple indicators to kind of confirm your uh, projection. Okay, So in that case, maybe fixed volume profile is not the best tool for Alice because, I mean, because of the uh, liquidity and that market, sorry, the coin is kind of, uh, immature yet it's been like only half a year but if you look at for example at Bitcoin on Bitcoin it's a different story it's, it's a way better analysis so yeah you can see exactly it corresponds to the level there you would expect the market to bounce off so that's exactly what I said 33 34k that's where I would expect the bounce off from this area so at, well using this tool you can make these projections and use these projections to kind of construct your robots and define the lowest and uh, highest limit prices. And in that case, that's exactly what I would do. I would set my lower price around this area, maybe even lower, taking into account the uh, volume profile for the Alice that was around this area, okay? And then I look at the highest price. So in that case, I'm looking for the resistance. So I would maybe set it around this level okay but no worries i mean we can use the trading up which is already on here which basically allows my bot to follow the market even if it goes above my initially set highest price in the trading range okay because once the price breaks the highest price let's remove all these unnecessary drawings here so once, imagine the price moves like this, it approaches highest price, and then it decides to go even higher. So in that case, my bot, because I have trading up feature enabled, 
it will automatically move my trading range higher and that way it will always follow the market and I can actually show you the example with algo um, so you can see in these details here that my lowest price initially was 0 0.74 okay and the highest price was 0 0.87 let me draw this for you uh, 74 here we go and 87 87, 87. Yeah, so that's how this whole story started. Yeah, you see? And eventually now my trading range is right here. So it managed to follow like 100% from the initial trading uh, zone. That's because of the trailing up. So because of the trailing up, bot managed to trade all this market all the way up to current price because otherwise without it trading up instrument enabled I would not make that sum that you, you see now on algo and instead it would be maybe just around sixty dollars or something okay so always keep in mind that even though you define the initial trading range this trading range can still change if you enable features like trading up and uh, even trading down, that's the new feature we uh, implemented a month ago. So let's go back to the asbot and what was it? Alice, right? USDT. No, actually, you can use BUSD as well. Wherever is your choice of stablecoin. So yeah, that's the trading range for the sideways market. Now is the time to define the amount of grid level. So usually. For the sideways market, I prefer to have uh, around 1% in grid step. So that way, let's see, maybe 100. No, it's not enough. Um, 70. Yeah, so uh, that's the exact uh, amount of grid levels that I need. Or, like, the wisest way would be just to have grid step for some reason like let's see if it will adjust it yes you see it adjusts so if i want to have one percent that like that's this the this space between my limit orders so that's kind of the margin that i give my bot to capture from the markets for each trade so that's exactly one percent here and let's say i want two percent you see it's gonna adjust it so for two percent i need to have only 37 uh, grid levels okay but keep in mind that the more grid levels you want the more money is required because for each uh, order I mean limit buy or limit sell order there is a minimum trade requirement on, on Binance so it's, it's usually ten dollars so well that's at, at the minimum that you need to take into account is if that's 37 grid levels then take into account that for each grid level you need at least ten dollars to afford this trading setup if you cannot afford it then uh look for some other exchanges let's say alice is not trading just on binance but maybe it's trading on hobby i don't actually know for sure but we can check so I think it's not hey Alice no but maybe on OKEX let's check it out no so sometimes you won't find your coin on other exchanges except for the Binance for example but that's not a problem at all it's just make sure that you um, conducted a proper research on coins that you trade because on exchanges like Huobi and OKEx, in most cases, requirements are lower than compared with the Binance. And most importantly, the fees that you pay on OKEx and Huobi, like limit buy, limit sell fees, they're gonna be lower, uh, I think, than on, on Binance. So that's something you can also check and monitor. I think that recently Binance um, kind of made an equal fee so regardless of whether you are using market buy order or limit by order the fee is the same it's that's exactly what they did but uh, before that it was that for limit orders you paid less 
which is now no longer the case. Well, unless you trade more than 50 bitcoins per month in total volume, well, that's like million dollars or something. So maybe not for every one of us. But uh, yeah, keep in mind that you can you can trade one, let, let's say Alice on OKEX if it's been listed on OKEX. And also you could trade Alice on Binance if it's listed on Binance. But on OKEX you, can, you could use one strategy for Alice and on Binance you could use another strategy and see which one uh, brings you the most. And then you can cancel out the one that is uh, performing weaker and just stick with the one that performs better okay so let's go back to my Alice um, yeah that was the trading setup I want 1% okay that requires 70 but what if I want to allocate just $400 let's see if I can afford it no so it says that at least I need $1,400 to start it if I don't have that much just adjust grid well, yes, now it's not 1% that I wanted, but, well, if you want to still trade this coin, you need to make some adjustments, and that's why you either sacrifice the grid step uh, or you need to sacrifice investment. So in my case, um, since I have more here, then I can afford to have, if not 1%, but maybe a bit higher. So let's see thousand dollars something that I could allocate here so it's it's always uh, something that you can configure and sometimes depending on the coin and, and the, the exchange of your choice uh, requirements can be different and yes in most cases if you see the same coin on OKEX or Huobi requirements will be lower so i recommend you to uh use this i mean use multiple exchanges to kind of diversify your strategies okay but yeah that's the setup i would use for the asbot and training up for sure um what else stop loss of course i would put it here because well most likely if it breaks this support line then it's gonna fall down to that point of three point sixteen dollars or something. So, well, instead of just holding on to a losing trade, you could just sell everything here and then re-enter the market at a lower price, and and that way you would be uh, in in a better uh, fit for the market at this price because the price is now lower. Makes sense to enter it uh, instead of just holding uh, on to losing trade from this price of eleven dollars okay but it's well it usually depends on the distance for the next support so if you see that the the gap between the support lines is uh wide well maybe it makes no sense for you to hold on to losing trade but if the distance is short maybe like 15 or 20 percent or something then well still you can hold on to this trade and even use the trading down to kind of further extend the uh, trading range that you initially set. So for those of you who don't know, trading uh, down is the feature that basically allows you to extend your lower setup, which is this one. And that way it would, it would plot new buy orders here. Okay. Uh, but the question is, where it takes the money so it takes the money from your available balance okay so let's say you started with one thousand uh, hundred dollars but now you are using trading down so in that case it's gonna buy more so your investment is no longer thousand hundred but well it, it might end up with some kind of one hundred seven seventeen hundred dollars or something like that so that's something for you to keep in mind that by using trailing down you basically increase the market exposure because you are buying more of the base currency as the market falls so if you were wrong in your analysis and the, the price will continue 
it's a plunge even further way down, then you end up having a bigger loss. So, okay, that's something for you to always keep in mind that even though trading down is a cool feature in a way that it can further extend your trading range, but use it wisely, okay? Do not uh, exceed your risk limit if you cannot afford it, okay? So always keep that in mind. And in order for you to keep that in mind, I propose a simple uh, logic to you. So first of all, define your initial balance. So let's say you want to allocate $1,000 to crypto. Now the, the question is, what are the strategies that uh, I'm going to be using? So for example, for me, that's automated bots. Automated bots. Then the next one is just smart trading. And the third one is HODL plus some uh, yield farming strategies, some, well, it can be staking, like DeFi locked staking, for example. It can be just an ordinary delegated staking, like on Quantum, for example, or it can be uh, liquidity mining, which is not the same as holding, of course, because it still implies an impermanent loss and some other things to be taken into account because you are still kind of exposed to the market risk. But you can use things like CFI lending, for example, just pays you an interest on your coins. So uh, this is the uh, combination of strategies that I'm using. The question is, uh, what is the proportional distribution? In my case, that's 50% in automated bots. So that's exactly $500. And then smart trading, usually around $20. But uh, for the last... Three months, I would say it's just 10%, so that's why it's just $100. And here it's remaining 40%, so that's $400, okay? And here, that's it's not the end yet, okay? You still need to figure out how much you allocate. So in automated bots, per each bot, let's say you want to have five bots. So in that case, it makes sense to stick with $100 per bot, okay? And, and that way you kind of spread the risk because some bots can perform better, some bots can perform worse, depending on the uh, choice of the coin and market conditions for, I mean, the volatility of this coin that you selected. So for example, this bot can bring me 10%, this one can bring me maybe 4%, and but the third one, let's say minus 3% in total. I mean, by minus three, I mean the investment change, which is over here. Like I have for OXT, for example, minus 15%. That's the final result, which takes into account the bot profit made, but also the value change of the OXT, because I'm still exposed to the value of OXT, the base currency, and I can see the exact uh, number of OXT that I have, which is two. Uh, 1,500 OXT. So that's that means if the price is falling, then the value of my OXT is diminishes, and that puts a downside pressure on my uh, strat. Well, yeah, strategy and my investment value falls. Okay, so that's something for you to keep in mind. That's why it can be minus three. So you then know that you spread the risk. And those bots that made you decent returns, they will eventually offset the, the loss you made on the third bot, okay? And same applies to smart trading. And by smart trading, I mean just a regular trading with uh, typical orders like limit buy, limit sell. It's just that here you manually set the price at which you enter the market, the price at which you want to exit the market, multiple take profits that's something you can do also on beats cap so or maybe a stop limit that's the tool that you can also use tva for example another great feature we have it's kind it kind of uh the tool that you can use to spread your uh investment over a certain period and having multiple orders that execute this uh trading on this particular coin for example okay so Literally, the success depends on the uh, the adequacy and the uh, the way you spread the risk using different strategies. Okay, so for example, automated bots and smart trading 
sometimes can bring you more sometimes hold strategy can bring you more than let's say smart trading but at least it, i mean this is a combination for you to spread the risk and if you lose some money in smart trading then you would expect that automated bots would ex would would offset this loss you made in smart trading so that's why bids gap is basically an all-in-one platform for you to use because you can utilize all of these strategies simultaneously on one platform you don't need to open multiple uh, uh, different websites instead you can use just beats gap where you have all your exchanges uh, linked and you can use them simultaneously you can manage your funds in different ways and that's the way how you basically handle cryptocurrency trading as of uh, yeah nowadays realities okay so let's go back to bots maybe um, so the key metric here to monitor is basically some total PL. it shows you the exact uh, profit or loss you made from all of your uh, active bots so it's been 1400 for my bots here it's like the investment change taken into account so it kind of takes this profit from my green bots and yeah subtracts the uh, loss I made in this four badly performing bots and that's how I get this number that's like I would say that's the only uh, metric you need to monitor to see the performance okay but also you have the some bot profit which tells you um, it basically just shows you the performance of your bots because bots will always make the money even on the falling market they don't care they just buy low and see for the uh, opportunities to sell higher so that can happen even on the falling market you see even on the falling market you still have this micro opportunities for the bot to buy low sell high and buy low sell high even though the market is falling it still can find this market opportunities to buy low and sell high and that way it always generates you money so that's the pure um well magic of this bot because regardless of the market direction they're gonna bring you money on a daily basis and sometimes this profit can offset the falling market okay so without the boat let's see SNX maybe here if I would just hold all this number of SNX and USDT I would be in minus $112 but since I'm trading with the bot it's just minus $40 thanks to the bot profit that it made which offset this whole market plunge not completely but it did it a big way so that's a why biggest advantage of automated bots in that sense that's why 50% in my case goes to automated bots because I'm confident that the only thing that matters to me at the end of the day is my realized return and I don't care if if I would just use one strategy that is just holding coins and waiting, waiting, waiting long time for the price to appreciate. I mean, of course, in the long term perspective, just holding uh, would bring you the biggest return. But be honest with yourself. Uh, would you sell it at the highest price? I mean, how come you know that it's been the highest price to sell it? OK, it can be that you were wrong and instead you could have made even more money with automated bot for example so automated bots they kind of just do the thing for you they uh, you don't need to scan the market on a daily basis you don't need to monitor trading on a daily basis it's just that you need to have this proper configuration you set it over here and then you just let the bot to do the job okay um yep so that how it works that's why we like automated bots because they literally um, mitigate a certain level of market risk when the market is falling because of its dollar cost averaging and that 
it makes some money even on the falling market. So both of these features, they offset the negative impact of the falling market, which is a beauty of automated bots. That's why I love them. And that's why it's 50% in my case. And it's proven to be successful for the last year at least. Um, yep. And then hodl yield farming. I mean, it's just you buy some coins. I have some on, on my balance here. Ethereum, do you, oh, by the way, DYDX is doing just great. I mean, I bought it when it was, Jesus Christ, it's $24 now. <clears throat> so I bought DYDX at the time when it just started to trade. It was around $11. That's when I purchased it. And now you see it's it's trading at $24. That, that, that was a great take. I mean, thank you, DYDX. Um, awesome. So you see some, some, some hodl strategies, they, they literally can bring you more returns compared if, let's say, if I would just launch the, uh, the the bot instead. But look, this value you see here, $1,640, that's still my unrealized return. I will get this USDT only if I just go right now and sell the this whole bunch of Albus that I have. But since I'm not selling it, if I wake up tomorrow, I can see that the value is now maybe not 1600 but instead maybe just 100 three dollars yeah one thousand three hundred dollars so it's lower than today so it can happen because it's still kind of a pending return okay so that's something for you to keep in mind always when you compare the performance of automated bots with a simple hodl strategy is that keep in mind that bots they bring you realized returns daily whereas a simple hodl strategy it's just a pending trade and it fluctuates every single day okay so it, it, it has more uncertainty here than compared with bots. So if you are kind of, uh, you don't have this huge risk appetite, so I strongly recommend you to use automated bots because they literally mitigate the level of uh, risk you have in crypto. <clears throat> so, um, yep, that's pretty much uh, what we wanted to cover, automated bots. Uh, I showed you how to launch uh, the as bot. Maybe you can also see how to do it with the classic bot. So for the classic bot, you just select classic. If you still think, let's say, that DYDX will continue the rally, then D uh, launching classic bot makes more sense here. So maybe that would be the setup. Lowest price down to the... Uh, $17, like actually that's around $18 where I have my support line. And since it's still discovering the price higher, I don't know where it's going to be the highest. So maybe just randomly set it here. I would use, usually I use grid step from 0.7% uh, to 1.5%, but maybe for this one, I would just use 1.3% or something. So that's exactly $46. Let's see if I can launch it with $1,000. Yes, I could. So this this would be my setup. And maybe the stop loss, I would set it around this area. Yep, so that's the configuration for the classic bot. Keep in mind that here it's the 50-50 split. And you can see that visually. So that means that at the time when you launch the bot, you need to have both 50% in base currency and 50% in the quote currency. If you don't want to start with this kind of balance, you can either uh, set the highest price lower, and that way, you see, now you need only 15 DYDX. So in that case, I would say that's around 30%, which goes to just base currency, and around 70% distributed over limit by orders, in, ca in case if the price falls, okay? So everything depends on your um, expectations, okay? If you're not sure about the continuation of the uh, price rise for the DYDX, then it makes sense to lower the uh, balance of base currency that you initially set for the bot. So 30% would be a reasonable allocation to base currency. So in that case, I would stick with this trading setup. But if you really think that it's just the beginning for DYX and you have big expectations based on your analysis. Well, you can set your uh, sell side even wider 
and that way your allocation would be 70% in base currency and 30% in quote currency. So at the start, that means that you are in the market already by 70%. So $700 out of your total investment is already in the base currency. So you are exposed to the market risk of which is valued by $700 in that case. So you are exposed to that level of risk, 70% of your total investment. Okay. So that's a simple logic, how it works. Okay. So no magic here. Okay. Literally everything is based on your risk appetite and your market expectations. And of course, some of your technical skills that you need to have in order to set your stop loss in the right way and uh, other features like take profit, trading up, etc. Okay. So once again, um, recommendation for you would be have your own list of favorite coins that you want to trade. And usually for me, that's the list of coins that I understand. I mean, I, I do understand what's the business they are doing in crypto and what is the uh, market fit for this coin, what's the traction that they are getting from the market, whether they are competitive or not competitive enough. Like, for example, Solana, Avalanche are really competitive enough compared with the uh, Ethereum, for example. And yeah, I mean, fundamental research is required in my uh, opinion, it's really important to trade only those currencies that you understand because at least you understand what's the level of risk you take. But if you, I mean, if you trade coins that you are not familiar with, but it's just maybe a friend of yours told you, hey, go and grab this coin. Well, for me, it would be uh, uncomfortable, to be honest, to trade the coin that I don't understand because it's kind of, you know, um, I have uncertainty over the risk. So that's something that you never do in, in trading because you really need to understand the risk you take. So yeah, create your list of uh, favorite coins. Define the exchanges where you're going to trade them. So if you can have it on Huobi, then I would say it's better to trade on Huobi in that case because trading requirements are lower on Huobi. Same to OKEX. But if you can only trade this coin on Binance, for example. Then trade it on Binance. Okay. Um, if you want to launch simultaneously um, different strategies on one coin, then you can do this by just swapping the uh, stable coin. So, for example, Bitcoin, you can trade Bitcoin to USDT, which is pretty much the same as trading Bitcoin to USDC. You see, it's just that you change the uh, stable coin. It can be also a TUSD or Binance dollar. I mean, or DAI. Well, I'd actually like the uh, DAI coin, but anyway. Mm. If you would ask me, I would say USDC because it's like the most regulated coin. Uh, in case of the USDT, it's the most liquid coin, but there are some regulatory concerns and it's just that Sometimes, if you see that there are both uh, pairs to USDT and USDC, and the volume is, well, pretty much the same, then I would stick with the USDC. But that's, if you would ask me, USDC would be my preference in that case. Just, uh, yeah, for that reason. Um, but uh, switching to different stable coins just allows you to have multiple... Uh, strategies on one coin because you know that for example now i have kuzama trading to usdt i cannot launch another kuzama because you see that's the restriction here because otherwise it would um, ruin the whole setup for my initial kuzama usdt because the order flow is already on the exchange and it would basically create this whole mess for me, if I would have two uh, strategies for Kuzama, so that's why you can only either trade Kuzama to USDC maybe. No, in that case, be USD. So yeah, for Kuzama, I could simultaneously launch only two bots, one on BUSD, another one on USDT. 
well, why would I do this? Well, maybe I just want to see which one will bring me the most. Because let's say on the USDT, I use configuration with 45 grid levels, but I also want to try to trade Kusama, but maybe this time on Classic Bot, and maybe with only, I don't know, 20 grid levels, and see what would be the, the outcome. You can do this. That's, that's, that's the thing that is not forbidden here. But yeah, um, in any case, the, another beauty of Beatscap is that you have the demo mode here and you can use the demo mode as a sandbox for you to experiment and get your skills sharpened for free because you're using virtual money. And I understand that psychologically it's a bit different from real trading because here you trade virtual money and you don't care if you lose it. But I mean, that's the, the, the most adequate and close to market realities simulation that you can possibly have. And that's like the ultimate sandbox to experiment with different strategies until you find your golden combination of tools you want to use in automated bots to achieve the, uh, well, as they say in portfolio management, to, uh, to achieve the alpha, but uh, to put it in, in simple words, basically to outperform the market or basically to outperform your uh, past performance. So that's like the ultimate thing you can do here. Um, yeah, you can trade all coins, same way as in real accounts exchanges all present here well most reputable are presented here so yeah just grab these tools uh, play with them and once you are satisfied with the results then you can switch to real trading okay so really the uh, the entry uh, like the, the threshold the entry barrier for you is the lowest as yeah as low as as possible we made it that way so that you don't need to risk your real money as you start trading. I mean, if your level of uh, cryptocurrency trading is beginner, then that's a wise thing to do. Just start with demo mode, understand how to configure bots and how to manage your funds. And then once you got enough experience, you can switch to real trading. Okay, that's really important. That's the lessons you, you, you get here in demo trade. Same way you can do this on smart trading mode. Well, if you don't understand some uh, some of the uh, order types like stop limit or uh, stop market, for example, then you can use the demo modes and then try them out and see how it's going to work for you. But of course, we have webcasts related just to this section of Bitscap where I explain how to use limit buy, limit sell, all of them. What are the scenarios that you can use them? Why would you use them? So that's something you can find on previous webcasts or just learn on your own using the demo mode, for example. That's like the combination would be to watch the webcast and also try it out on your own. That's like the best way for you to, to learn about new order types and how to play with different configurations, etc. Okay, um, let's go back to my real account real quick. So yeah. Um, as of now, um, it looks like this in my case, um, I constantly, well, pretty much every two weeks, I either close some of the trades or open new trades. So that's what's the case for MKR two weeks ago, um, which was not the good, good timing back then, but still I think it's going to be, uh, trading higher if not then maybe i will set stop loss over here 2066 dollars or something um yeah status is range for ends and means that we are out of the trading range as of now so if i want to keep up with the falling market i could just set my stop trading down lower but i don't want to do this um because it's already breached this important support line over here. And as it breached it, now I have less confidence in, this, in that coin based on the technical analysis. So maybe it makes sense for me just to set a stop loss over here again 
and forget about the stop trading down as of now i don't want to risk more funds for this coin so that's why I just stop loss over here i think it would be a wise thing for me to do um so that's the way you kind of uh, monitor your bots on the well i would say two three times a week for like 25 minutes spent you you can monitor analyze performance of your bots and see if you need to switch it to another strategy or not so for example for bitcoin uh, let's see how it's going on over here for our chart so well at the beginning it was a wise thing for me to do to start with the s bot because i know that on the sideways market and on the falling market s bot is the ultimate strategy you can have but once the market switched from the sideways formation to a rising then around this area i should have considered closing my uh, s-bot and instead open classic bot um, so that i could make more money on the rising market and maybe let's look at one inch usdt so for one inch s-bot right now is the perfect strategy okay so look if i would just buy one inch over here that's where it's pretty much here all started my loss would be minus 21 percent but uh, thanks to the bot it's not even a loss it's plus 0.32 percent because this profit that made by the bot uh, it offset this whole market plunge and also it managed to buy crypto on the falling market so if it rallies then it's going to be even bigger return okay so let's compare it you see simple hodl would bring me minus 40 dollars but thanks to the bot it's three dollars of return so it's not even a loss it's some some profit that i made which is of course better than just holding this whole sum and notice that now i have 239 one inches so even though the market was falling not only did i make some return but now i have more one inches and when the market reverts, it's going to bring me a huge sum of money. Same, it worked for Aldo, for example. That's why for two, yeah, almost two months, it, it made me 118%. That's an insane result. That's that's a huge money here, okay? So literally, it's success depends on um, market timing the most. Secondly, uh, that's the diversification. So never put all your money in one trade or in one strategy so that's why i recommend this kind of split of your balance and yeah don't forget about the tools like stop loss and even if you forgot about them you can always modify so you click here modify and yeah, i can i can set stop loss right straight away okay so that's the thing you can do just click on any strategy you want to change modify and you can select trading down take profit stop loss at any time or you can switch it off for, for sure that's up to you really so um yep that's pretty much what we have on beats gap as of uh today um i also wanted to cover the combo bot and the thing about the combo bot is that it's just for the futures market it uses a slightly different uh, approach, it uses both greed and DCA levels um, in its technical structure, but logic pretty much remains the same, except for the fact that now you can trade not just on the rising market, but you can also make money on a falling market now because it can short sell the market. Okay, so uh, with the, with the, with the combo bot. It's the next level for you. So if you are a beginner, then combo bot is not something that I would recommend you to start with. Instead, focus on ordinary trades on spot market with the classic and as bot strategies. And then once you started to understand how it works and everything, you can upgrade your uh, level to combo bot. But keep in mind that futures trading is a different cohort of trading where it has its own 
um, rules, jungle rules, and by that I mean its own risk composition, and it's really important for you to understand the leverage effect on your trade and why it's not always a wise thing to trade with the biggest leverage because that way you put you need to have enough of the margin to cover this trade what's the difference with the cross and isolated that's something for you to really understand because in cross if you trade cross then you can lose your entire balance if the market moves in the uh, opposite direction and i isolated mode in that way you can lose just a portion of your balance so the difference is that with cross you basically just give more space for the bot to trade your your liquidation price can be uh far away from your entry price whereas in the isolated mode you limit the uh, volume of margin you put into the trade and that way your liquidation can be really close to your entry price you can be easily liquidated from the market so enter the market with your futures but only when you see that well the stop loss that you would set is kind of close enough to your entry price and you don't risk all the balance and you don't take a huge leverage compared to your balance so these kind of things and with the combo bot, I haven't been trading combo bot for like two months already, so I don't have any um, showcases for you as of now. But you can watch previous webcasts where I've been talking about just combo bots, explaining to you how it works and uh, how to use this leverage settings here and how to use this column to analyze the total number of DCA, grid orders, what they tell you and what can be the maximum risk. Um, so yeah, these kind of things, because it's, it's, it's a completely different level of risk management compared with the spot market. All right. So and yeah, and to summarize, as of the indicators for you to use when it comes to um, figuring out what's the uh, best momentum to enter and exit the market, I would use volume profile that would just show me where can I expect the next price level at which the, the price will either stop for a while because there will be a clash between sellers and buyers in, in a big way or that's the price level at which I would expect the price to revert. Um, so based on that you can set your trading range accordingly. I would also use moving averages as you can see now on the chart. So usually when you can see the crossover, it tells you that the market uh, has reversed. And so for example, you see we have the crossover here as of the uh, 23rd, yeah, 22nd of September, it's like a week ago. And that's a bearish sign, okay? This kind of crossover means that, well, the selling pressure is intense and that if you zoom out you can see that this looks like a point of reversal and that potentially we can literally fall down to 34k around this area or something so it's based on the volume profile plus that's the signal we got from the moving average and also maybe the third tool that i would use is the um mm, well can be the Ishimoku cloud. Uh, let's see what it tells me now. Usually you would expect it to, to use it on a longer time frame. So on the one day time frame. Usually I just look for the uh, clouds itself. So whenever the price breaks the cloud, it's from 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 bottom top it's a bearish signal like over here you see from the bottom top it breached and here if it breaks it from the uh, upper to bottom then it's a, a bearish signal so using this together with other indicators 
that can tell you uh, the whole story. Basically, these tools just tell you what's the um, the strength or weakness of the trend as of now, and based on that, you can have some expectation of where you would see the price, to which price level you would expect it to fall, and where you would expect it to revert, for example. So that's how you would use it. Um, but if you want to understand where it's, the market is moving now, then you need to use some on-chain data analysis, like the one you have on the glass node, for example. And there you can see what's the inflow and outflow of funds from exchanges. You can see the uh, the level of open interest on the futures contracts on the market, and you can see the exact volume and expect that if the market is having, a, let's say, a negative um, funding rate, that means that there are many uh, short sellers on the market. So at some point when you have too much, too many short sellers, um, somebody like a big one will chase them and screw them up and that will liquidate them and create a turbulence on the market. And that's actually something that happened um, over here. It was a huge uh, liquidation of those that have been holding long trades on uh, exchanges like FTX and even Binance leverage trading. So yeah, you can you can be easily screwed up if you are over leveraged on this market. And, and yeah, you can analyze this data on, on the own chain uh, data aggregators that can really tell you what's the kind of the disposition of forces as of now what is the level of selling pressure and and buying pressure on the market so all these kind of things okay so right now with this whole thing around china and well uncertainty in 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 general with this whole mining migration and usually in september we get some bad news from the us because CFTC and uh, uh, CM, uh, sorry, CME, I think that's the entity. Usually, they they they, they need to show some uh, performance before the uh, end of yearly report. So usually, they are uh, targeting cryptocurrencies in September and trying to kind of uh, go harsh on them because they need to show off that the budget spent. Uh, is justified and that's why usually that happens in September okay so something bad about crypto usually happens in September and, I mean it's you don't need to trust me just go and check uh, the news back in 2021 2019 and you would see some bad news that happened in in, in September uh, I mean regulatory um, things around crypto so yeah um, I'm, I'm, this is not the financial advice or whatsoever, it's just that based on that I would expect the price to now fall to around this area and until we accumulate enough and then we bounce off it again. So that's why I would stick with the ASBOT as of now because ASBOT on the falling market and eventually on the sideways market, that's something that I would expect from this short term falling market, would be the ultimate uh, solution for you to really accumulate the base currency and make some money on it uh, during the sideways and falling market. That's the, like the ultimate thing I would do as of now. But of course, never put all money in the basket, diversify. And yeah, you're gonna feel yourself good in this market and you're gonna sleep well enough because you know that your portfolio is well secured as possible as you can on this market space. But yeah, uh, that's it pretty much for today. Let's see if you've got some interesting questions. Saying that this platform only for professional trader and uh, a laughing emoji. Well, of course not. I mean, with that level of tools we have, I mean, with that amount of tools we have and having this demo mode, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of experience you have, you can still learn how to trade 
absolutely risk-free and then start trading with uh, some complex tools that we have on Bitscap, I would say. But in general, it's not really complex. It's, it's straightforward, uh, three-step process for the bots. And yeah, you're just ready to go. Because everything, like even uh, customly made strategies, they are already familiar. You see, just start new bot as bot. And that's the uh, automatic configuration that it sets for me. Okay, so you don't really need to uh, be an expert in that. It will help you in any case. So if if it says that this thousand dollars is not enough, it's gonna tell you fix it, and you fix it. Okay, you see, it's easy. Um, the only way we make a loss is when the coin value goes down. Yes, that's correct. That's how the market works. When something falls, you lose the money. I mean, there is no way for you to lose the money on, on rising markets. Well, unless you are uh, trading a combo bot and you have a short sell position. Because short sell is for the falling market. You, you expect to make money on a falling market and that's why you... Uh, use the combo bot short sell strategy, but on the rising market, of course, that's going to be a loss for you. So that's the only case where you can lose money on the rising market using short sell bot. Uh, can you explain again stop limit buy setup when you want to get some coin at as low price as possible? Yeah, let's do this. Go to trading uh, stop limit buy. Okay, so the thing about the stop limit buy is that you have two prices you need to set. That's the stop and that's the limit. So the stop, in other words, is it's just a trigger price. So let's say I don't want to buy... Um, okay, no, let's say maybe not on this coin, but uh, let's say Aave. Also not the best example, maybe this one. Yeah, maybe like this. So let's say you set a condition at this price, 240, 240, which says, okay, if the price reaches this price level of 240, that way it's going to trigger my algorithm to plot a limit by order at any price below or even at that price, for example. So let's say at 100, sorry, 213 dollars. So that means that the first condition is for the market to reach the price level of 240 dollars. Once it reaches this price level, it's gonna trigger a limit by order. So it's gonna plot the limit by order. And once the price then falls to 213, this is when it's gonna execute now the limit by order. And that's the only way when you will be in the market. So stop price is just a, a, a conditional trigger for the logic that you want to put in this uh, trading setup. And same way for the sell. Let's say you, want, you only want to sell some coins if it breaches $325. So you know that, okay, it breached this resistance line as it breached it, most likely it's going to go up to the next resistance, which is around this area over here, $350. And this is where you would sell it. So that's why you would set your stop 320 And then you would only sell it at the price of 350 Okay. So that's for you to play with this tool. Okay. Is it also trading price down? No, it's not trading a uh, price down because it's just you set the price and it needs to reach this exact price. But as of the trading down, um, we have trading down on bots. But that's, I mean, that's a completely different story. Uh, why there is no multiple take profit and stop loss on futures trading as it for a uh, spot? Um, well, that's because we haven't edited it yet. It's just that there are many things that we are building 
and sometimes priorities they are uh, focused on some other tools instead that are focusing on more fundamental aspects of trading so sometimes of course there are I mean even on, on the Binance futures here we don't have some tools that they have on Binance futures trading like for example buy stop buy uh, sorry market stop orders um, as of now we don't have it here also but uh, you, you would expect it in the, in, in the future for sure because that's something we are working on of course um, uh, is the as bot is it wise to use trading up and trading down at the same time yes you can do this but just keep in mind that um, you need to have enough money on your balance to afford trading down in that case but usually it uh, tells you if you can afford it or not let's say for here modify trading down so it tells me exact maximum balance in and maximum balance out so it's gonna take the quote currency from your balance to place new buy orders and will release the base currency from the grid top okay so this is how it works you need to take this inputs into account when you construct your configuration but yes you can use it simultaneously I think I have it like on on algo I think let's see uh, yeah I have both trading up and uh, trading down and then it's been doing just great okay so I managed to extend my trading range down to this point here and that, and that way I allowed my bot to trade all this area over here which is good um, and I'm still having trading up so, which means if it reverts and goes in this direction my trading range will follow the rally so it's gonna be somewhere over here next time it goes here <clears throat> Let's see, maybe one more question and we are done for today. Mohammed question. Trying to find it. Please specify the performance of your bot in real market for the last two, three years. So on this account, I cannot do this because first of all, it's been just a year for me trading this on this account. But also that's my primary account and the total sum here is $27,000. So usually I withdraw money from this account and deposit, which actually affects the uh, total value of my portfolio in that case. And that's kind of distorts the whole performance here. But the way for me to analyze the bots is just to use the spot history uh, for the uh, whole period that I've been trading. Um, but I would use it for the last maybe five months because six months ago we had a different logic used in uh, spot history so that's why it's now makes no sense to analyze one year but instead starting from this update of spot history it makes sense to analyze it so it's only five months in my case but these uh, bots that i'm holding are for exactly for like fun some of them five months already so you can monitor this performance since the, these times and also you can watch some of the uh, first webcasts and see uh, what are the bots I used there and what was the balance back then so I mean everything is fully transparent here of course I don't I don't have this spreadsheet that I would fully disclose all my trades and everything because I have different accounts on different exchanges and some of them are linked to Bitscap, some of them are just for yield farming. So if I would aggregate all this data, uh, it would take some time, of course, because that's like huge sums of money to be taken into account and different strategies, yields that it generated, etc. Okay. And also to distinguish the performance of bots just from the HODL strategy, that's another story. Because when you close bots, sometimes you just close them with things like cancel all open orders, but you're still left with some base currency. This base currency is now in your uh, HODL uh, 
part of your portfolio and that way you kind of distort the whole uh, analysis if you don't if you, if you forget that that's the uh, sum of dots that comes from the automated bot but not something that you purchase just for the whole portfolios that's a different story here you always take need to take this in and out so actually it's a it's a great thing for me to start doing to kind of um write down all the actions that i do and that way i could see what was the exact performance of my hodl strategy smart trading strategy and automated bot strategies and yeah this this would be a wise thing to do but as like for the sake of this webcast we just focus on uh the actual performance and the one that you can monitor in that case, four months ago, that's when we started these bots here. And yeah, you can kind of monitor the activity since then. And also, we are about to add some features like um, some bot profit comparison with previous days and also some total PL with previous days. That's something we are about to add. And that way you can really compare the results in a, uh, in a longer time scale. Okay. So yeah, that's it for today. Really appreciate you all coming. If you have some questions unanswered, then feel free to ask them here in the chat box. Uh, support will reply to you promptly. And then you, you also have this comment section below on the YouTube. You can just ask your question and leave your feedback. We always read your feedback to improve the uh, product further. And yeah, um, you can also ask your question on the next webcast. And yeah, so there are many ways for you to reach out to us. If you want to learn more about Beatscape and how to use different strategies, you can go to uh, Beatscape blog. And here you can read more about automated strategies like which one? 